I got a whole bunch of pens from Kevin from Fountain Pen Revolution. This is the new Indus model, and I have to admit I have a bit of a soft spot for Fountain Pen Revolution. And what they're doing is that they're based in India, and Kevin is, is uh, launching a bunch of his... I mean, he sells Indian pens, but he is launching a bunch of his own pens under the Fountain Pen Revolution brand. And this is the latest incarnation there, the Indus. And I got them in four colors. Uh, I think there was another one, maybe a white one, but in any case I have more than enough to pick from. Uh, there's a sort of burgundy uh, model, there's black and blue, and there is also a demonstrator, which I really like. I think it's very, very cool. Uh, it's interesting. Fountain Pen Revolution does nice stuff with their pens. Uh, they had the Dilly model, which was piston filled, and as I understand it, this pen is supposed to replace the Dilly model. There's also the Treveni. Uh, another uh, nice model, but those are cartridge converter or eyedropper pens, and these pens are actually uh, piston filled, and that's always nice because you know you, you, you the, the pen itself becomes the ink reservoir, uh, no extra converters necessary or anything like that. Okay, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen tie, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. Now I'm going to use the demonstrator model because all four of these are they're the same pens. The only thing that differs is the color. Um, I'll cover the parts of the pen, tell what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sound. Let's start with the demonstrator model, uh, and yes, it is the same. I uh, will show you this on two pens. As you can see, the finial, it's just that, a finial, then you have this, this gold-colored uh, clip, and you have the, uh, the um, center band. The clip is tight, but it's not so tight that you can't use it. You have the barrel and the piston turning knob, and of course on the demonstrator you can really see the, uh, the piston seal there, the actual piston, and then the turning knob, another gold band right there at the end. The cap unscrews, nice, you won't accidentally pull it off, good thought went into this pen, and then you have the section. You have the nib and the feed, plastic feed. A lot of Indian pens have ebonite feeds, this as far as I can tell is plastic. Uh, the downside to plastic is a little harder to heat set uh, and to, to carve a deeper channel into, etc., than ebonite is. But the plus side is, I think if you have a good plastic feed, it should run fine. And my experience with these pens has been pretty positive. Now, you can buy a bunch of different nibs, and I got three. Uh, I got these ones, which are flex nibs, and you may be able to see, I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but this just has a very long nib slit. It runs in much deeper, allowing the tines to spread under pressure. I also got a uh, a 1.0 nib, uh, so one millimeter, which is a, a fairly broad nib, uh, and then I got a uh, yes, F for fine, just a fine nib. Okay, now some other stuff I can show you, and I will use another pen for that. Here's the burgundy model, which is uh, currently the emptiest, because it also comes with a flex nib, and I've been flexing away uh, rather happily. You can see this ink window, which I enjoy a lot. In a piston filler, that's always good, so that you know how much ink you have left. And as you can see, this works very well. Currently there's a blue ink in there, but it, it does really work, which is nice. The nib units screw out, so you get nib feed and a nib collar around the two. You can just unscrew them. Nib and feed itself for friction fit. You can also just pull those out if you want to switch nibs. Um, but one thing that I really liked is that all of these pens have black nib collars, as is common. But the demonstrator model actually has a clear nib collar, which you can't really see in here because, of course, it's clear plastic and then another layer of clear plastic. But that does mean that you can really see the entire feed, which is very, very cool. You can see the feed, you can see the nib, and you can see the ink collected there, which I think is a very neat feature. All right. As to the section itself, a fairly uniform section with threads there. And that's pretty much the rundown of the model. Now, what do I like about it? What do I not like about it? I'll start with what I like about it. These pens, I think, are decent. They're usually decently priced, and you get a piston filler, you get a range of nib options, and I have enjoyed these nibs. The 1.0, the, 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 the fatter nib, 
was a little bit dry, but there's nothing that you cannot do about that yourself. It's fairly easy to tune. Um, I may show that in the writing sample. Uh, there is uh, the, the regular fine nib, well tuned, no issues, ran fine. And then there are the flex nibs. Now, I did find these flex nibs to run dry under normal writing. So after about half a page, they, they stop writing. But if I just tap them on the paper gently to prime the feed again, uh, they picked up quickly. Same thing goes for flexing. You can get a very impressive amount of flex out of these nibs. Also as flex nibs, I find them appealing because their two tones have a bit of gold and a bit of chrome color on there. I think that's very neat. But you want to learn about the uh, ability of the flex, where you get a decent amount of flex out of it. It's really nice. Uh, it goes from a good fine to, I would say, a double broad. You can push them too far. I bent one of them a little bit, but I could also bend it back in place. As to ink flow, it keeps up relatively well, but you will get railroading. Now, I have been trying these out first with Pelican Royal Blue, which is a slightly dry ink, I find. Right now I have an Ackermann Royal Blue in there, which is a little wetter, um, but maybe if you really put in a slightly thicker ink, something like Noodler's X Feather, um, or maybe that, that pigmented black ink uh, that um, uh, Platinum, yeah, Platinum makes, um, maybe it would railroad a little less. Even so, you have to adjust your writing speed. But what I found really interesting is that even when the pens, the flex nibs, ran dry under flexing, if I would tap them on the paper three, four, five times, they would pick up no issues. Another nice thing about these pens being piston filled models is that if your nib does run dry, you can just put a little bit of ink into the feed by priming it by turning the piston knob. You don't have to open up the section, fiddle around with the converter, you can just, there is not even a blind cap, you can just twist the end of the barrel. I like that. Another thing I really like is that the pens post, they post securely, making for a nice, decently sized pen, but they do not engage the piston turning knob. So I have had that with, I think it was the, the original Noodler's Nib Creeper. If I would, po I would post the, those pens and I would pull off the nib, sometimes I would twist it a bit and a drop of ink could come out. In this pens, I have been unable to operate the uh, piston by rotating the cap. It's a nice little detail, but it helps when you write and use your pens. Okay, things I don't like so much. Oh yeah, the smell is there. It's a smell I have really come to associate with, with Indian pens. To me, I don't find it particularly bothersome, and I did, did not find these to smell as badly as Noodler's pens. Um, some people love it, some people hate it, but to some people it really is a big deal and the smell is not that pungent here. Okay, another thing I don't like so much. Given the price, given what you pay, I think you get a very decent, well-made, nice, all-round pen. It's a knockabout pen, you can drop it, you can throw it away, uh, even if it breaks, it's not a giant deal because these are not super expensive pens and yet they are a lot of fun to play with. Now, you have to treat them for what they are fairly inexpensive pens and that's it. You cannot expect the amount of detail, the finishing uh, you would expect to get on a 400, 500, 600 dollar pen on a pen like this. And in some of these pens you see that the, the, the eye of detail for finishing is a little, um, I, I'm not going to say underwhelming, but is it's there, it's pronounced. For example, I don't know how well you can see this, but on this finial there is a thread which I assume keeps the clip into place and you can see a bit of the thread sticking out. In fact, this whole thing is aligned slightly to the side, this, this gold part. These are details and I am not bothered by them, but I do want to point them out. You see a similar thing here at the section. Again, I don't know how well you can see it, but this material is definitely a little bit jagged. It's not ground to a perfectly smooth finish. This, I find nitpicking, because the most important thing about pens is how they write. I have not really had issues with the pens, apart from the slight running dry of the nib. I have not done any tuning. All I've done is clean the feeds. Maybe if I tune the nibs a little bit, they'll write more flawlessly. But all four wrote out of the box. That is better luck than I've had with, say, noodler's pens. Uh, I have not had to tinker with these pens to make them write. They wrote 
out of the box. Um, piston filled pens, that's nice. They do what they're supposed to do. They're right. They're fun to play with. And that's pretty much all there's to it. So, again, Kevin, thank you for sending me these pens. I appreciate it. And the kindness is paid forward. I'm giving all four away in one go, not four separate prizes, one go. If you want to win these pens, leave a comment, not on this video on YouTube, but leave a comment on my website, sbrebrown.com. Find the post that goes with this video, leave a comment, and 48 hours after this going online, I'll draw a winner. Randomly, and you will win all four pens. It's two flex nibs, one 1.0 um, millimeter italic type nib, and a fine nib. And that's it. Ink capacity is pretty decent too, so a lot of fun to play with. Guys, let's see how... Oh, I need to forget the uh, uh, the measurements, of course. Uh, the weight, 18 grams in total, 8 grams for the cap, 10 grams for the body. Capped a length of 131.7 millimeters, that's 5.18 inches. Uncapped 123.9 millimeters, that's 4.87 inches. Posted 148.1 millimeters, 5.83 inches. The barrel, 10.4 to 11.2 millimeters. That's 0 0.41 to 0 0.44 inches. Section diameter, 9.3 to 10.1 millimeters, or 0.36 to 0.39 inches. Okay, hope this was useful so far. And I'm glad to see you later. But first, let's do a writing sample. Bye. Okay, here we go, writing with these Indus pens. Now, uh, I have three nibs to go through, uh, so... I'm just going to show you every nib. This is the flex nib. Uh, normal writing, it's on the fine side, but I find this a nice wet nib nicely lubricated so it's it's fairly um, a wet writer and because of that it's pretty smooth you may hear some feedback yes there is some feedback but it is quite a smooth nib I would say uh, as to that wetness I was talking about this is Ackermann Royal Blue uh, and as you can see you get a fairly wet line out of that now of course the real joy with a flex nib is the flex so let's see how far we can push this. It's going to exert more pressure. Now what I find significant here is not just the amount of flex, I'll do a bit of writing with that in a sec, but also you can see that it railroads and then it picks up again. If you just give it a second, maybe tap it once or twice to make sure the feed is primed, it picks up fairly quickly. And I think that is impressive for a flex nib at this price. Now let's do some uh, flexy writing. Now I am really pushing this nib here. I'm not going slowly. And as you can see, I think this is a very good score. Were I to go a bit slower, the, the, the trigger should not have to go too slow because that hampers capillary action too. But if you find the, the sort of sweet spot in writing speed, I think you can really get away with, with a pretty good flexi writing. And you get a very nice range in line variation. And you can also do reverse writing for those of you who enjoy that. Then you go from a fine line to, I would say, an extra fine or maybe even extra extra fine. Okay, I have another one there. Uh, this is also flex nib, so I'm not going to show you that's the same nib. Here we have their regular fine. That's a nice writer too. Also pretty wet, so well tuned. I think I find this the smoothest one in the bunch. Uh, and that's interesting given that it's a fine nib. Um, as I said, not exactly dry. Line variation a little bit, but clearly not meant to be a flex nib. If you want that, you have to buy the flex nib. And yet, being nice and wet and steel, you can just squeeze out a little bit of line variation. 
Uh, you can also do reverse writing if you prefer that, but you already have a fine nib, so you would really do that to go from fine to extra fine. Okay, final indus is that 1.0 millimeter, uh, call it a stub or maybe an italic. Uh, this is no pressure, but you can see that it has that line variation. You can also see that it skips a bit. Of the three nibs, I found this to be the driest, and maybe we can look at how you could solve such a problem in a second. <coughs> Let's just see how it writes. I'm using absolutely no pressure here. And what you can see is that you get a nice bit of line variation, but you also get quite some skips. Okay, so uh, it's always dangerous to do nib tuning in videos, so if you choose to do this, then you do so at your own risk. But what I would do here is that this nib slit is excessively tight. So if you want to solve that, a very simple trick is you can just uh, take, put your finger on the nib, you're going to get ink on your finger, take a hard surface like this metal Jin Hao nib that you don't really mind scratching a bit, um, you put the nib on there like this, and then you push up slightly. Now what that does is it, it forces open the uh, nib slit a little bit, just hold it for a few seconds, uh, and then you have to be very careful you don't lift the nib off of the feed. There we go. So that was a few seconds of work, and now it's wet. Um, also, I think right now it's much closer to one millimeter than it was before, and I think that was just because it was quite dry before. So what you have here is a wetter nib that does offer that really nice, whoop, there we go, uh, that really nice stub-like or italic, I should say, italic line variation. So there you have it. If you want to win all four of these pens, leave a comment, not to this video, but to the post of this video on my website, sbrebrown.com. And of course, uh, a very big thanks goes to Fountain Pen Revolution. Can't put it on one line. But fountainpenrevolution.com. Kevin, thanks a lot for sending me these pens. I appreciate it. And let's give these pens away to the community. Guys, I hope this was useful. And uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.